Polestar 1 is a premium GT coupe for the Bentley Continental GT and Aston DB11 set that instead of throaty V8 or V12 power delivers the ultimate in plug-in hybrid technology. It can go further and faster than any PHEV has gone before. Plus, it's astonishingly fast, very exclusive, exquisitely finished, and extremely rare. Did you ever think a Volvo-derived design could be this exotic? Talk about drivetrain complexity. There's an awful lot going on here, and you might be disappointed to pay Aston Martin money and get a four-cylinder, two-litre engine fitted here, but this one is both turbocharged and supercharged. And so that there's independent drive for the rear wheels as well as those at the front, this power plant's aided by a pair of active torque vectoring 85 kilowatt electric motors fitted to the rear axle, one for each wheel. Yet another motor, acting as a starter generator, sits between the engine and the car's eight-speed auto gearbox. And powering the three electric motors are two large batteries, one over the rear axle and the other in the transmission tunnel, all of which helps to explain this model's substantial 2,350 kilo curb weight. You'd want plenty of power to haul all that bulk about, so how does 609 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters of torque sound? That's good enough to get you to 62 miles an hour in just 4.2 seconds en route to 155 miles an hour. So you'll need the huge steel Akebono brakes as used by the McLaren P1. There's a choice of five powertrain settings, the default one being hybrid, which prioritises electric propulsion, unless you really do need all-out acceleration, in which case the car switches into the alternative power mode. The other options are pure, full electric and all-wheel drive, plus there's an individual screen to allow you to set your preferred drive setup. You can't adjust damping as part of that, not from inside the cabin anyway. This car has race-style, manually adjustable, dual-flow valve Olin's dampers that are formatted with a choice of 22 options to deliver suspension feel to suit your exact preference. Get it all right and you'll enjoy a simply astonishing level of twisty B-road agility. With rapid direction changes, you simply wouldn't expect from a car of this size and weight. All of which here in Blighty helps compensate for the fact that Polestar production limitations mean that you're seated on the wrong side of the car. Something else you certainly wouldn't expect from a PHEV is a 77-mile all-electric driving range. But that's what the Polestar 1's large 34 kilowatt hour battery gives you. The flip side of having that big battery output is longer charging time than would normally be required for a plug-in hybrid, though around five hours from a typical garage wall box should cover most of the daily battery replenishment you'd need. It's less than an hour using a 50 kilowatt public charger. The car's quoted CO2 return is 15 grams per kilometre, which is why it sits in a tax-busting 3% benefiting kind tax band. And the WLTP rated combined consumption figure is 403.6 mpg. Yes, you heard those figures right. You might be less tempted to dismiss this as merely a very expensive Volvo once you view one in the metal or, more accurately, in the CFRP or carbon fibre reinforced polymer because that's what this sleek body shell is fashioned from, a specialist composite that gives the structure its rigidity and lightness. And what a structure. The Volvo Concept Coupe show car this model was based upon may date back to 2013, but the shape hasn't aged much to the satisfaction of Thomas Ingenlath, now Polestar CEO, who created it with current brand design director Max Missoni. We're not sure that it looks its best from this profile perspective, but it grows on you, particularly the lovely line of the glass coupe roof, the Aston Martin style C pillar and the sleek frameless door mirrors. Then there are these rather dashing rear wings, which apparently reference the classic Volvo P1800 and are tightly sculpted in a way only possible because of the hand layered CFRP panel work unnecessarily referenced by this rather cheap looking sticker behind the front wheel arch. 
The wheels with their striking gold valve caps are of course huge, 21 inches in size, an inch wider at the back than at the front and shod with grippy 30 profile bespoke Pirelli tyres that fill the big arches, which on closer inspection you realise aren't that far apart. This car may ride on the SPA platform of bigger Volvos, but a big chunk has been taken out of it in this case, and the Polestar 1 is only four and a half metres long. So there you have it. In Polestar's words, the embodiment of an avant-garde GT, complete with pop-out door handles and unlocking, if you wish, activated via the digital key provided on the Polestar 1 Connect app. That feels far more suited to the futuristic theme here rather than using the rather disappointing Volvo key fob. It's rather a different feel inside though, where in an unfortunate start, you're positioned on the wrong side of the cabin in this left-hand drive only design. Predictably, but a touch disappointingly, just about everything here has been borrowed from Polestar's parent Swedish brand, primarily the 12.3 inch digital instrument panel and the nine inch central portrait format touchscreen. It's left to special leather finishing, bespoke trimming, mostly faux carbon fiber, and little touches like the translucent gear selector to try and create the required six figure ambience. You also get gold seat belts, color coordinated with the brake calipers, the damper controllers, and the tire valve caps. And in a nod to the brand's guiding star vision, its logo is reflected onto the panoramic roof on the overhead console. That carbon fibre trimming features on the doors, which, like the fascia top, are beautifully stitched in soft leather. Build quality is difficult to fault. The wide cockpit and this panoramic glass roof give a light, airy feel, and the large, enveloping leather seats are superbly supportive. Plus, you get silver pedals, a head-up display, and a superb 16-speaker, 1,400-watt Bowers & Wilkins audio system. Time to take a look in the rear. Stepping back across door sills that reprise the sticker message on the front wings, CFRP body optimised carbon fibre layout. And once inside, well, customers in this class don't tend to be too bothered if the rear seats are cramped. These ones certainly are, as you'd expect from a GT Performance Coupe described by its maker as a 2 plus 2. If there was a six footer up front, you'd have virtually no leg room at all back here. Headrooms at a severe premium too, even if you're not particularly tall. We'll finish with the boot, revealing an area theoretically 143 litres in capacity, but which in reality is just 126 in size if you take off the space occupied by this charging lead bag. Unfortunately, given this area's diminutive size, there's no split folding rear seat feature, so you can't push longer items into the cabin. And here's why. Behind this scratch resistant plexiglass window at the back of the trunk area is this rather unique electrical panel with its bright orange high voltage wiring via which power is provided to the pair of rear axle motors. An unusual touch in an unusual car. We live in this unusual hinterland period between the combustion engine and the electric motor, and there are times when neither seems quite fit for purpose in today's motoring world, even when combined by a typical plug-in hybrid. But the Polestar 1 isn't a typical plug-in hybrid. It's a car that pushes boundaries and an automobile that will fascinate historians when they reflect on the beginnings of motoring's electric age. Yes, for the money, it possibly ought to be faster. It certainly should sound better and it should surely be more luxurious inside. But those priorities belong to a different age. This car sets its own agenda and it'll be loved by individualists of the same mindset. Even if you're not particularly enamoured by the end result here and don't like the borrowed Volvo bits, the tiny rear seats or the restricted boot, you can't deny that this car delivers a stinging rebuke to anyone championing the notion that electrified cars are all the same. And for that, we like it very much indeed.